What Bosie and Bob have done, they have selected three pieces of timber from the timber supply, and they are loading the three pieces, which are going to be two legs and a collar, onto the timber buggy to take to the to the site where the cutting and preparation is to be done. Buzzy and Bob have selected a piece of timber to be a leg in this three-piece set. So what he's doing is inspecting the leg to see where the strength and or weakness would be in the timber. the end of the prop to, to his taste and then he cut the long side of the pitch on the, the piece of timber and then the short side and this is the, pea, the portion that will fit up into the collar. Now Bussy is walking to the other end of the prop and he is going to butt that end of the prop to fit into the hitch in the floor or the bottom rock or whatever the, the bottom end of the prop. He's taken two cuts from the sides on an angle. Now they're going to turn the prop and take two more cuts off. Now Buzzy has taken the four main cuts from the bottom end of the prop. He'll now get an axe and trim that little bead that's left in between his cuts so that he has a nice uniform taper on the leg to stand into the hitch. They'll turn the other two ends up so that he has access to chop them from a good position. Now he has cut the ribbons off that was left standing from the chainsaw and he has approximately a six, seven inch taper on the leg and the leg is now about half the diameter of the original prop at the butt end. Now what Buzzy and Bob are gonna do is they're gonna set two three-piece sets up on the outside to show how they fit together and what purpose they serve. So in order to stamp the legs and keep them firmly in position, they're going to dig some shallow hitches into the ground to stabilize the legs when they set them. Now the, this three-piece set is understandably smaller than a lot of actual installations are because it is done primarily to show how the timber is made, how it's handled, and what purpose it serves when it's put into place. What Bob and Buzzy have done is stood the leg and temporarily held it in place with three short plank. Now they're gonna get an improvised set of uh, measuring sticks to hold in place to see what height or length the next leg should be. So that when they make the collar, the collar will set on the two legs in a very close to level position.
Bozzy has gotten his length. He has marked the, the piece of timber, both for length and for the collar. He'll now measure from his mark to the end of the timber to determine the length of the other leg. Now that the legs are temporarily secured, they'll measure the length of the collar between the notches. They're now taking the collar from the mine car, placing it in the saw buck, turning it to see which is, which is gonna be the top side. If it has any bow or anything less than straight, they'll turn the bend up. This is where the weight will come from, and this will actually be a stronger piece of wood with a slight bend than if it was perfectly straight. He's made a series of, of notches down into the, into the timber. Then they're gonna turn the timber, and while the saw is running, he'll cut a slight taper on the collar. This is the part that will be facing up where the support is needed. That small notch will be explained later. While Bob turns the piece of timber, Buzzy will split out the portion that he sawed the notches out to the depth that's desired for the collar. Now most of this is done by feeling by side. What he's doing that last move is cutting the bark and the sapwood away from the base of the notch at the bottom of the collar so that when it's in place that you will have solid wood bearing against solid wood rather than bark and sapwood to have a more secure and better fit. Now the previous measurement that was taking is now carefully marked on the collar so that the spacing between the notches coincides with the measurement that they took separating the two legs. The first cut was to saw the piece of timber to the proper length. The second cut will be that which is remaining on the collar between the notches. Again by eye, Buzzy is sawing three or four saw cuts into the, into the collar which then will be split out with an ax to create, to create the notches. Now they're placing a wedge which is, which is cut parallel into both notches to see that the both notches are parallel to one another. 
They're bringing the collar over and setting it on top of the legs. And as you can see, the measurements were accurate and the collar fills the space completely between the two legs. Now you can see a gap at the end of the collar and this is a delivered gap. As the initial weight gets applied to the collar, this is a building adjustment that that collar can crush the leg or the leg can yield to the collar's forces and not break. And in the future, sometimes it'd be a long time or for years, the, the gap that's at the end of the collar and the top of the leg will have almost closed tightly because now that pressure has exerted sufficient force to press the collar down and close that gap. So putting the taper on that leg is like a building adjustment that is put to the timber so that it doesn't break. Now the small flat surfaces that Buzzy put on top of the collar when he made the notches are going to serve a very useful purpose as they're going to portray now. That flat surface affords a very smooth area for that wedge to be driven in to tighten that collar tight against the rib. This way, when you apply pressure to that wedge, the wedge has a flat surface to ride on and it doesn't break the wedge. Now we have two small sets, three piece sets standing in place. They're wedged and they are held in place with temporary supports at the bottom. What we're going to do is bring two mine plank in and lash the two sets together so that they, that they are stable and will stand securely while we put some laggings across the two collars and then show a four pole being put into place to help support any unstable coal in a hard pitch vein or unstable roof in a slow pitch vein. Bob has temporarily secured a plank on one side of the leg is now securing at the other side. They will duplicate that on the, on the other side of the two legs. And this should make these two sets stable enough to cross the, the collars with laggings and four poles. The first lash is in place and Bob is spiking the second lash on the far side of the collar. This will keep this collar from rolling off while we are progressing with the laggings and the four poles. What we are doing now is we're bringing the mine cart, the timber cart in, and this has got some laggings and mine plank on which are going to be used to span on top of the collars from one set to the other. Now what the, what Buzzy and Bob are doing is they're placing the laggings, and this is called lagging off a set. They are bringing the laggings up from the bottom and then putting the, the, the other end up towards the face on last and placing them so that they are in a rather secure position and don't roll. And they are usually uh, shifted around a little bit so that they fit and lay in position off on their own. They are customarily not fastened with spikes or any other fasteners. Now they'll next bring the mine plank and, and these will stick out beyond the width of the set. 
but this is because we are only portraying a small set for convenience sake to show how this, these sets are constructed. So Bozzi is has brought the, the mine plank up between the ligands, turning it when he has it up between the roof and the ligands, and then placing it in, in position crosswise to the ligands. Depending on the conditions of the coal, if it's hard pitch and you're using coal as your support above the timber, these planks can be spaced skin to skin, tight together, or if the coal is real firm and coarse, they can be spaced apart uh, three, four inches. So now we have a bridge set consisting of many pieces of timber. Primarily, the legs, the collars, the laggings, the mine plank on top, wedged securely into position, and this should give adequate support to work underneath these sets in total safety. What Bob and Bozzi are doing now is putting four poles from on top of the inside collar to the bottom of the second collar and this provides temporary roof support to secure the face area from the last permanent set to the solid face. What we have in place now are three four poles that are filling the gap between the last set and the face of the coal. So we are placing mine plank on top of these three four poles which will then complete temporary support from the last secure set to the phase, providing total safety for the men to be working the coal or whatever other work is necessary at the coal phase. These four poles in this instance are extending out towards the phase from the last set about 30 inches. Depending on the conditions of the coal, how friable or free it is or how firm, dictates how far and what size four poles are used. But they always provide temporary support and roof protection between permanent sets.